Hey everyone, let's take a few minutes here and talk about Lake Ontario spring brown trout fishing. Hopefully there'll be some uh, tips and info here that will help you uh, put a few more brown trout in your boat this upcoming season. One of the uh, most common questions that we do get is how soon can you start trolling for brown trout? And the answer to that quite simply is as soon as you can safely get your boat in the water. Now that will vary year to year depending on the weather that we get and as long as you can uh, safely get your boat in the water you know assuming the the ramps are ice free you can start uh, targeting the brown trout the browns for the most part they spawn in the fall and after they spawn they many of them drop back out to the lake or they'll hang around you know local harbors and marinas and they'll constantly come and go all winter long chasing bait um, all, you know, from Hamilton Harbor all the way down the, the Canadian south shore of Lake Ontario to the Niagara River. Um, the browns are cruising. They're looking for smelt and shiners and gobies and what, whatever food source is available for them. Browns by nature are rather um, opportunistic feeders. They'll, uh, they'll eat a variety of uh, species of prey. Unlike salmon that typically just eat Alwives and smelt. Um, browns will also eat, you know, gobies, shad, smelt, um, shiners, uh, whatever is available for them. Um, and that kind of separates them from some of the other species. So most years, it's usually around mid March, is when we can uh, typically start uh, getting out chasing them. And the type of water that we're looking for, um, while most of the lake is relatively ice cold for the most part, we're fishing very shallow for them. We're fishing in front of the harbors and the marinas and any uh, little uh, creeks. Anything that's going to uh, have a little, going to add some color to the water and just to add a little bit of warmth as well. We're always looking for a, the water that is slightly warmer than the rest of the lake. And how we're targeting those fish, you know, we're, we're trolling, we're fishing very shallow. We're using a lot of monofilament lines uh, that time of year. We're fishing generally 8 to 12 feet of water. Monofilament lines from 10 to 15 pound test are is kind of the best way to fish because we're going to be fishing stick baits uh, for the most part for the that little early period. Um, using planer boards to get your lines away from the boat. You can use um, you know your standard size planer boards but over the years I've come to like these mini planer boards. There's some different manufacturers that make them. This is the church TX6, uh, I believe it is. It's uh, very easy to use and it's uh, very enjoyable to use too when using light rods and smaller baits as well. Now the type of baits that we're using when we're in that shallow water are often smaller stick baits um, for the most part. For many years, you know, small Rapalas have been very popular, you know, whether you're using the straight models uh, the, the jointed models or the straight models. Bay rats have been very popular too the uh, last few years. We've got the long shallow as well. They also have a uh, the S3 as well, which is really nice because it maxes out to uh, to three only three feet of depth, so you can really stretch it out. You know, a hundred feet uh, behind your planer board, and that short lip is only going to get you down. Um, three feet. Um, they also have a, another uh, short shallow version which will uh, get you down um, five to six feet as well. Uh, other good models are Live Target Smelt. The gold one is quite good for uh, imitating gobies, anything with a gold or copper patterns. Natural patterns obviously if you're fishing in cleaner water uh, the brighter patterns can work well if you're in some uh, colored water. We always, we're trying to find that green water um, when possible. Sometimes there's a mixture of the green water in with uh, the dirtier water in closer to shore. Um, we try to avoid fishing in clear water. 
Um, the Browns, they're very skittish in there and they don't like to hold in there and they're just, uh, it's very difficult to get them uh, in that water. And that water is constantly influenced by the wind, whether it's, uh, you know, pushing that colored water offshore or if it's pushing it inshore or up and down the shoreline. Uh, rain as well or runoff from the melting snow is also uh, influencing, uh, you know, the the color of the water that we're fishing and a good way to kind of scout that out too you can always go on there's different uh, websites that will have a uh, satellite imagery to show you um, you can see kind of see where there's some plumes happening up and down the, the lake shoreline and that will help you um, scout things out uh, prior to your upcoming trips Speed when we're fishing in there with the stick baits, it's often a little bit slower. It's usually about one eight to two miles per hour for the most part. There are times where they might want a little bit fast. You can try doing some uh, gradual S turns with the boat, get the one side of the boat going a little faster and slow down the other side. And if you notice that one side of the boat is taking uh, more hits versus the other on different um, occasions, then you can uh, alter your, your regular trolling speed to uh, to try and mimic that and uh, put more fish in the boat that way. When you are using the, the little stick baits, all you need to use is just a small little snap. There's no need for uh, a snap swivel for stick baits. Just a nice, strong, quality snap is all you need for, uh, for stick baits. Um, when you get into the spoons, again, keep it small, but a nice quality ball bearing swivel um, will work. So stick baits are generally a little easier to use when you're in that shallow water anywhere from uh, 8 to 12 feet and now that's kind of where the boat is normally but you know you can normally when you're trolling along the shoreline the, the shoreline side of your boat um, sometimes we'll stretch our boat or our planer boards real close into that water so maybe our boards are in five, six feet of water as well. That's where it really helps to use those uh, sh very shallow diving um, light stick baits as well, just so that they, they don't hang up on you. Um, when we start to slide out into the deeper water, then you can, we'll get to, to uh, some spoons as well. Um, light, small, um, thin flutter spoons are usually a little bit better. Again, we're mimicking the prey that the, the the browns are feeding on. Um, a lot of your old, if you have any nice old light spoons, stuff like flutter chucks or Sutton spoons or Andy Reekers or old classic spoons, Evil Eyes have always been very good for browns. Um, some more modern spoons, you know, your, your smaller stingers and your, your little Dreamweaver Super Slims uh, are also very good baits as well. Again, Often mixing it up between a, a mix of natural colors and some brighter colors to, to see what they're wanting on any given day. And again, mixing them up too between, uh, you know, your silver back spoons and golds and coppers as well. Because some days one or the other can certainly make a difference. Uh, to fish the spoons, once we're kind of getting into that anywhere from 10 to 20 feet of water perhaps. Um, if you have downriggers, you can... You know, just have your cannonball down maybe five to eight feet and you can stretch it back uh, maybe 50 feet or so. It's generally not necessary to, to go much further than that. Uh, a one color lead core is also very effective. It's just going to get it down just uh, about five, six feet as well. If you're getting out a little bit deeper, then maybe you can get into a two color. But just be careful when you're making your turns again. You don't want to hang up on bottom. Small divers are a great little... Uh, way as well this is an old little mini walker diver but Dreamweaver now makes them in that same size too step them up a little bit too small slide divers as well they'll allow you to put a longer leader back but browns are they can be a curious fish and um, there are times where they will hit closer to the boat and one effective way to fish spoons is just to have your diver out maybe 8 to 20 feet so you can just kind of barely see it off the, the corner of your boat as well and um, it, it doesn't hurt to, to try that on any given day. You can also slowly start to mix in some larger um, stick baits as well um, moving up a bit. 
Under sticks have always been uh, very good. And long A bombers as well. Another classic bait. I'm sure many seasoned trollers have Rebel Fast Tracks in their tackle box somewhere. And of course, Ripplin Red Fins. So mix up your baits. Um, you can try, you know, just a, a few different sizes out there. You can also start to run some with a, a small lip on them too to cover the, the mid-depth of the water column, the live target smelt, a few different uh, profiles they have. They got ones with uh, the lips, the banana ones, and their standard jerk baits as well. Another good bait that I've done very well with Browns for many years is uh, from Rapala. It's their standard balsa floating minnow bait, but it's got the uh, the lip on there. It's called the scatter wrap, and it really gives it a, a very aggressive darting action. And I've done very well for Browns on it. They have it in uh, in the straight floating. They have it, I believe, in a countdown, a jointed, and a tail dancer model as well. So. Uh, Give those a look too. Now as the water starts to warm up uh, and get into that uh, low 40 degrees, um, you know that's the time when the, the salmon will slowly start to come in as well and it's not uncommon for us to be pleasantly surprised and catching some salmon on the on the light brown trout gear. Uh, as well you know those that are just targeting salmon will also tag into some nice brown trout as well. So we do see uh, a few weeks often and uh, generally in, in mid to, to late April where there's crossover, we're catching salmon and brown trout in anywhere in that 15 to 30 foot water. And uh, it can be a lot of fun. What happens then is generally, um, you know, once the salmon get fishing gets good, a lot of people forget about the browns because, you know, with the various salmon derbies and, and stuff going on, um, the salmon are the main focus and you really can't uh, blame most people you know the, the salmon are, are the fish that most of us uh, like to target and chase of course but uh, for those that are still wanting to chase brown trout uh, into the spring they don't stray too far from that shallow water and, until that it really warms up more into June so anywhere from that 15 to 40 foot water, the, the browns are going to be there from uh, late April until uh, mid late May at least, depending on, on how that water starts to set up. Um, by that point, you can, you can still catch them on stick baits, but you can be a little bit more effective and fish uh, a little bit faster um, using spoons. A full spread of spoons. Um, your super slim and kind of your smelt size spoons will still be good but you can start to get into some more regular size spoons like your um, your 28s or your reg size uh, this is a caramel dolphin spoon excellent color for browns especially uh, if it's got a gold or a copper back to it again it imitates the the gobies quite well Hog wild or mixed veggies, some of those hotter orange colors can be good too, especially when fished higher up in the column. And of course, uh, stinger spoons have been brown trout killers for many years. This is UV MBK. You got your different owlwife patterns, various uh, mongoose patterns as well, that green and chartreuse and silver. Frogs will work good too various black and silver patterns as well and then uh, once the owlwives start just to spawn and become more um, common in early to mid-may you can even run some uh, some mag spoons as well um, you know again the, the MBK from Dreamweaver different dolphin patterns blue dolphin Michigan dolphin Two Face is a, a great all round spoon as well. And you can start to use some longer lead cores and your regular size divers. Um, a five color lead core can work uh, quite well in that uh, 
35, 40 foot water. Uh, what else do we got here? I think that's pretty much it. Um, browns can be a lot of fun to target if when you're using the right gear. Um, again, not many people target them um, once the salmon come in. So you can often have that, uh, that 20, 30 foot water all to yourselves uh, from late... Uh, late April into May when the salmon start to, to slide out a bit deeper. So, uh, and, and sometimes too, when the salmon, when, when they're coming and going, and maybe um, after you've had a morning where the, the salmon fishing has been good and maybe it slows down a little bit for you, maybe try tucking back in and uh, enjoying some of that uh, excellent bonus uh, brown trout fishing that we have. If you got any questions, you can always reach out to us uh, through our different platforms at the store. Hopefully some of this has been uh, pretty useful for you. Thank <laughs> you.